Well, hello, chaps, and welcome back to DTH Reviews. Uh, we've been away for a while, but we are back with Watch Dogs. Now, Watch Dogs was announced, uh, what was it, E3 2004, I believe? That's, that, that, it? <laughs> that sounds about is, right. Is that right? Because that's what it feels like. Well, it feels like Watch Dogs was announced uh, a million years ago, because, goddamn, it just, I don't know, there's just been so many trailers for it. it. It really was the kind of king of the show at E3, correct me, which one was it? I actually don't know. Uh, 2012, two years 2012. ago. 2012. It really was king of the show at E3 2012, and it's what everyone was talking about, and there was a lot of hype for it. And then, and then they delayed it. <laughs> and then they delayed it. Was it once? Was it just once? It was once, but they delayed it like two weeks or three weeks it felt like before it was supposed to come out yeah it was like the the thing that people i think were gonna buy for their new consoles and then they said uh it's delayed until spring and at the time i really was hyped as well i was really excited yeah i was as well and then they said you know it's gonna be like six months and i realized that is not an insubstantial delay you know that's not like <laughs> yeah, yeah we need to fix the frame rate give us three more weeks it's like we need to make this whole thing better which is kind of <laughs> yeah. yeah so going into this i had zero expectations and zero hype for it which i try to do for as many games as possible it's hard to but i try to do it for a lot of games where i just don't go in i don't go or i go in expecting nothing really because it's the best way everything turns out better that way yeah yeah i agree and yeah so Watch Dogs is a video game it is a, yeah that's, that's correct yeah uh, so I, th I think you're right. I was really hyped, and I think I used all my hype back in 2013. It was all gone, so I almost forgot Watch Dogs was even coming out, and then we picked it up. And I was like you. I, I jumped in uh, without any expectations. And uh, so we try and summarize it before we go into specific details. It's open world. Mm -hmm. um, very quickly, it felt very much like a Ubisoft game, especially the side stuff. It's very reminiscent of Assassin's Creed 4 and Far Cry specifically. In the side activities, you got like the gang hideouts and there's driving missions and there's betting. There's even like sync synchronization points and that <laughs> yeah, unlock very, parts uh, of the map. It's it's a Ubisoft game. It's very Ubisoft. Yeah. But let's let's dive into what actually makes it unique because I feel like the last uh, let's say three open world games we played, which is Infamous, GTA V, and Saints, Saints Row, yeah. Row, they all have they all have like a novelty. Let's say like yeah. something that you know is different. So for Watch Dogs, it's this hacking. It's this hacking ability. You have a phone, a cell phone in the game, and you can wander around the streets. And yeah, let's go into detail about the hacking specifically. So I'll go into positive. One thing I really did like about the hacking is just when you are perusing the city, mm -hmm. you have your phone out and you can see this randomly generated data on every single AI walking around. And I liked it. You know, I, it's not there's not much to it, to be honest with you, but... It kind of gave quite a good sense of the city being alive, and I like that you can listen to people's conversations. You can even like kind of spy on people's text message conversations. And as I said, there's really not much to it except for what I explained there. But it just um, it adds a little something. It yeah. kind of makes the city feel very alive. Each kind of person has their own little personality, and it's probably one of the things that I think they did the best in the game. To be honest with you. Yeah, I, I <laughs> is that an insult? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, well, we'll see, I suppose. But yeah, I like that stuff. It's just sort of added a little flavor to walking around, and I don't think I ever saw a repeat of anything, which is. Impressive. I don't think I did either. I'm pretty sure it is all just randomly generated, which is impressive. And yeah, I like that stuff. And then, really, the only other hacking mechanics are you can hack traffic lights and steam pipes and bridges and cameras. Yeah. And that's uh, that's about it. And I don't know the. I don't really know what I expected from the hacking itself, like what how it would be useful, but it sort of felt like the majority of it was there to make car chases a bit easier. <laughs> and that's yeah. about it. Or it was for very you, car chase central. Yeah, and it would show up in missions sometimes where it's like, I can blow up this random box that will explode for some reason and kill an enemy <laughs> instead of shooting him in the head with my silenced pistol, and that was about it. And yeah, I was a little... well, I was... I I, I think the, the hacking is kind of gimmicky. You know, yes. In not really the best way. I, I don't really know what I expected from it, but it was... it just ended up feeling like this thing that they thought of, and then they, they said, it's really good for car chases, but uh, every time I was in a car chase, I sort of thought, like, this would be 
over even faster if I could stick my arm out the window like every other video game and shoot at these fools. <laughs> yeah. Which I can't. Oh, God. Which was kind the of weird. The ability to, or I should say, the ability to not be able to shoot out of a car window was yeah. really surprising to me. I was, uh, I didn't even know about it. Like, I was in some sort of car chase and I was being shot at from people in cars. Yeah. Who would lean out the window and I was clicking on the buttons and nothing was happening and yeah. I had an arsenal full of weapons in my back pocket and I was like really what what do I can I not shoot these guys and I got out the car and they blew me to bits and I was yeah. like well that happened okay yeah and it really just feels like they took the shooting out of cars out of the game so that to sort of force you or encourage you to use the hacking more just because that yeah, was you're the probably thing right. and so it, it that sort of stood out to me and it was it was weird but yeah so that's what sets it apart, is you can hack stuff. And that's really about the only thing that sets it apart, I think. The hacking while uh, being chased in a car does make for some cool moments every now and then. Uh, like you'd be going towards a car park and you can lift up the door and then shut it behind you. Or like if you get the traffic lights right. But it kind of more feels like you're getting lucky yeah. every now and then. You're just kind of going around just spamming every traffic light you can come across. Just hoping that mm -hmm. one of them are going to just eventually trip into it. And also the police system, where they would kind of scan the area, I found quite frustrating. Yeah. Uh, you know, when those big yellow circles came on the minimap and you had to kind of evade them. Uh, I wasn't very good at getting yeah. out of those circles. <laughs> They're really hard to get out of. I also noticed the cops don't have... They don't know what boats are. <laughs> yeah. And uh, every time there was like a substantial chase, usually in campaign missions, where it was like, evade these, you know, your five-star wanted level or whatever, I would just get in a boat. And drive for about ten seconds, and then <laughs> yeah, out of the and I, and I was out of their circle, and that sort of stood out as well. It's like, why is there no police patrol? That you know, that's sort of a weird oversight, I think, especially for Chicago, which is like right on. There's a lot of water there, you know. So. Yeah. Uh, well, while we're on the topic, um, what did you think of the driving? Because it was very. It was strange, it was very arcadey, and I wasn't expecting it to be as arcadey. I was crashing into a lot of walls in the first hour I was playing. The, the, it's kind of weird. I, The car handling's okay, I think. I mean, I think that it also changes from car to car. But it's the car handling's relatively fine. It just feels... I think the biggest problem I had with the driving was the camera. I don't know if you do that, I, if you had this problem, but I would... The camera takes way too long to reset. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you. yeah, I did notice that, yeah. And every time I turn a corner, my thumbs just sort of instinctively pan the camera with the car, but it doesn't really keep up with it. And so the number of times where I would be turning my car and the camera would be looking sideways or behind me, I it, I found the camera to be extremely annoying most of the time. I, I The number of times I would just crash into a wall because the camera was pointing in the opposite direction was really frustrating. That was the biggest problem, I think, with driving. And there's some weird physics every once in a while, like... I don't know if your car can roll over. I was being chased yesterday by hooligans and they crashed into me on both sides and my car flipped fully up onto its roof and then just rolled back over onto its tires <laughs> and I kept going. And so the physics are kind of weird, yeah, and I, I don't know. I The driving never fully clicked with me because of that. The, the camera and the physics sort of just were always messing with me. One thing I did like was how kind of destructible everything was when you hit it with a car. It was, again, pretty arcadey, but it really made for uh, just a bit of fun, really. I didn't really slow down when I was in the car much. You could kind of just push. No. When you collided with a car, there wasn't really much of an impact. You kind of just stopped, and then you kind of just shoved you past sort them. sort of plow through them. Yeah, yeah. and, well, you know. Destructible telephone poles. <laughs> yeah. Oh Next God, gen, man. So good. Next gen. <laughs> now we just need destructible trees, and then it'll be perfect. Yeah. But just so, drive down the sidewalk. I did like the, that you could kind of just plow through anything. Uh, <laughs> it didn't feel very realistic, but I didn't really care. I was just kind of crushing through stuff, pushing through traffic, and it was a bit of fun. But one thing I noticed was, was it just me, or when you were in a car, the actual back of the car just looked dreadful, and I don't know why, but I was, my flatmate was watching me, and we, while you were in a car, to me, that was when the game looked its absolute worst, and I don't know why, but specifically, the car models, while you were in them, they just looked like, PS2 graphics from my perspective. <laughs> oh, weird. I, I don't. Yeah, I didn't really notice like the cars specifically standing out. No, yeah, that was really know. strange for me. It was huh. like the thing. The uh, only thing I really noticed as being uh, not so shiny was well, there's a few things that aren't well, so shiny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we should talk graphics. I mean, th 
it's hard to compare it to like the the thing that we saw two years ago it's sort of silly to bother because like that was a long time ago the consoles it was coming out on didn't even exist when that thing was shown you know so but whatever i mean irregardless of that original reveal i think a a lot of the times the game really doesn't look so hot and we were playing it it on the ps4 Mm. which i mean next to the pc version should be the best looking version of the game and i think like everything i don't know just the lighting is really really flat yeah and like the the bright daytime stuff just looks terrible and i mean it's hard because we have played infamous and obviously infamous will look way better it's a ps4 exclusive of course Mm. i mean this is out on everything including the 360 and ps3 but even comparing it to gta 5 which was only on last gen gta 5 looks better in almost every circumstance just because the lighting's really good and it helps like if they i feel like if they just tweaked the lighting a little bit so it wasn't so bright and flat all the time it would look miles better but i i'm not sure and i think the water looks pretty good i think it looks pretty nice when it rains that's what i was just about to say it looked at its best when it was raining yeah uh but aside from that and i mean the cutscenes look good but the the daytime stuff i was shocked actually a little bit when i first (laughs) booted it up in the first mission or two where you're driving and it was high noon i was like this looks awful uh every once in a while but yeah so it basically looks not next gen i think that's probably the best way to summarize it up it, it looks last gen yeah and it uh i th- it kind of feels like a like i don't know if last gen is the right word but it feels like an older ubisoft game like the i feel like in the last couple of years they did a good job with far cry 3 and assassin's creed 4 of making the side stuff giving you some purpose to do the side stuff like Far Cry 3, you know, you do the hunting and you'd get your crafting equipment. And I, I think AC4 did it the best where you have the hunting system as well. But there's also even the collectibles. You get, you know, merry sea shanties for your crew to sing when you're on the boats and all those things. Yeah. I always felt like I had a good reason to go do the collectibles and or and side missions. And in this, it's like you get money from your side missions and that's it. And it's like, what? I what do I need money for? And they say, uh, to buy ugly alternate outfits for your guy. <laughs> and like, you don't need you don't need the outfits. I I stuck with the default one because they all look dumb. I thought, and you don't need to buy cars because as soon as you, like, one of the early abilities you can unlock just disables car alarms, so you can just steal a car willy nilly. And you can steal money from any civilian you're walking past as well. Yeah, and you don't need to buy ammo because, I don't know, you have infinite ammo, it seemed like. I never, ever came close to running out of ammo, ever. Like, every gun has hundreds of bullets, and at the end of the game, I have, like, $100,000 and with absolutely nothing to spend it on. So it was like, should I could do the side quests if I wanted to because I really liked the game, but I don't, so I didn't really have any reason to do the side quest things, you know? It just sort of felt like a bit of a backstep from their last few games, I thought. I feel like out of all the Ubisoft titles, this has been one of them that I was the least motivated to do side stuff. You know, thinking back to Infamous, uh, I spent a lot of time outside of missions. It actually took me a long time to complete any of the missions, because I was enjoying so much just doing all the random activities that you were allowed to do in the city, but in this one, I just felt like I tried everything once in the first one to two hours, and then I, I would, every time I'd finish a mission, the way I play open world games, I do one mission and I do like three to four side missions and then I do another mission. And then I feel like by the time I, I'm at the end of the game, I've done like 70%. But I would finish a main mission, I would like peruse the map and I would just be like, I don't really want to do any of these at all. And let's go into a little bit more detail about some specific ones. There is one that I did like, uh, the CTOS towers, the red symbols on the mini maps where you kind of had to use security cameras to find ways to unlock the doors. And I just liked it because it had certain puzzle and platformer elements, some were better than others. Again, the very reminiscent of the unlocking hideouts in Far Cry and Assassin's Creed. But those are ones I liked. Um, they're, they're, I think there was a gang hideout one we had to like find a specific enemy and like take him down. I quite enjoyed those, but there was a whole map full of icons that I barely touched. Except for one. Should we talk about the one side uh, activity that is actually really really good and that is digital trips uh actually it's probably the best thing in the game to be honest with you digital trips is probably the best thing that they implemented 
They might be the best thing in the game, but they also totally feel like completely out of place in the game because the whole game is like strange. they're so it's such a self-serious game and then you get these weird robotic spider missions which i really enjoyed but it's like this doesn't this should be in a saints row game it, it just feels totally out of nowhere but and they're really extensive like you can play them for hours like the spider tank has its own like skill tree and you keep playing you keep unlocking like different stats and skills for the spider so it was just i was really surprised about the amount of time you can invest in these what seem like seemingly just side missions if you know what i mean yeah, might, yeah. Well, some people might even miss them because they're only little dots on the map you're never forced to go try them so um they were really good i i liked uh, nearly all of them and it's a nice little s distraction since uh i wouldn't rate any of the other side missions very highly but as you said they are they are pretty out of place but uh, i <laughs> i had a really good time with them i really liked robo spider but uh, I beat it on my first try. Like I got to the end and unlocked all the skills. Oh yeah. And then I sort of, and then I didn't play it again. You know, it was like yeah. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and I beat it, and it was fun. And the spider looks really awesome. It does yeah. Uh, and it gets up buildings really great. And but after that, I was like, okay, that was fun. Now what? You know. So I don't know. Yeah, they're they are fun. The digital trips are fun, but they just they're so out of nowhere. It's weird. It is weird. Um, yeah. We should. We should talk campaign missions. Yeah, sure. um, I feel like a camp, uh, open world, the campaign missions need to either be, they either need to be really free and let you sort of like give you an objective and say, do it, do it however you want to. Uh, or they need to be like super linear and scripted, but the things you do in it have to be like the most awesome thing in the world and you can't, you can't that that you can't recreate when you're just roaming around the world and like saints or you know like gta 5 obviously has stellar linear missions uh and this doesn't really have either of those things like the the missions are all not too shiny you know there's not much pomp and circumstance to any of them it's sort of just like oh go and kill this guy but you can't do any no fun you can't do that like I, I the other day there was a mission where it's like kill these two guys and there's a hill they're sort of at the bottom of this little valley and there's a very sort of slight hill and i was like i'm gonna go up that hill and snipe them and then run away on a motorcycle i'll never know i was here and the hill is like very clearly traversable but there's just an invisible wall that stops you from going up that hill mm. and i i encountered things like that all the time where it's like oh i'm gonna try using my some of the different abilities I have or going around and doing this and it would just say no you're not allowed to do that do it this way and that it just grew so tiring and there are like insta instant fail parameters for almost every mission I found uh, I probably failed like 50% of the missions at least once because it would just be like oh you were detected by the cops you're not allowed to do that uh, restart you know and things like that and the the missions are just very ordinary like there's tailing missions and there's escort missions and there's drive here and shoot up people missions and that's about it and it was all i love my tailing missions oh my god like do they not think <laughs> do they not oh my god Ubisoft love them man they absolutely love tailing they're the worst goddamn things in the world they are the so, worst yeah yeah so the campaign missions aren't they're not really very interesting you know no. they didn't really provide any wow moments and they were super constrained and uh, that was I uh, even like Assassin's Creed 4 had horrible main missions but then I feel like Far Cry 3 did some even their main missions weren't amazing but there was some freedom in some of the side stuff like the taking over the hideouts or whatever you could do that any way you wanted to and this just doesn't really have much of that it's sort of just like do things the way we want you to do them or else yeah I was gonna compare the campaign to Assassin's Creed 4 as well because to me it really felt like you were kind of playing these rather generic, unimaginative missions, and kind of just every time you started one, you were kind of crossing your fingers and hoping that one of them would be a little bit unique or out there. And every now and then, you did get one mission which was a bit more scripted and a bit more interesting, usually at the end of an act. Yeah. Uh, usually, it was a finale mission, which was usually pretty fun. But uh, we have going back to Assassin's Creed 4, uh, I did complain about the main missions, but luckily, Assassin's Creed 4 was the most fun. Assassin's Creed game to play outside of missions and yeah. we've already said that Watch Dogs doesn't live up to that and there isn't much to do outside of main missions that is that enjoyable 
So it kind of shoots itself in the foot in both aspects, to be honest with you. To be honest with you, when it comes to uh, I don't know anything mission based. Yeah, and I will say the one I think for me, the thing that I enjoyed most in the whole game was the criminal convoy missions where you, where you had to kill the guy, not where you had to knock him down. Be, only the ones where you had to kill the guy. Those mm. ones were really nice because they were just like kill these guys in any way you want to, and so it, I enjoyed, you know, parking a car in the middle of the street and killing the lights. Uh, the street lights and causing a huge pile up and then blowing everything up and doing things the way I wanted to though I liked those missions they they were quite enjoyable and they they were sort of like a glimpse into you know like if you, there was more freedom I think this game would be a lot more fun in a lot of its missions and yeah I really liked those criminal convoy where you had to kill the guy uh, those were definitely the highlight for me I think of the whole thing we haven't talked about the shooting the shooting does feel good I like yeah, the shooting I, it feels I good I agree it, it does feel good, and the I I have written down here that I like the sound. I think it's a good sounding game. There's lots of little like the guns sound nice and heavy, but there's lots of little little sound touches. Like when the more you damage your car, the engine starts to grind and click in some very unhealthy sounds. Hmm. I also really like the free running, where you hold down the circle or B or whatever, and you can just yeah. sort of run over all the you know jump over things. I would like. I think that that would be it would fit well in like a Grand Theft Auto game if you could just hold down a button and jump over everything instead of sort of clumsily <laughs> ragdolling over things like you do in GTA. I, I like that free running thing. So uh, there is one multiplayer aspect which uh, is actually kind of forced upon you. There's some optional stuff, but there is one that is almost forced upon you, which is basically a multiplayer hide and seek game, which is exactly what it feels like. It's, it's kind of interesting, like. Uh, when you start the game, a guy will come into your game, an actual player, and you have to locate him within a specific area, and he looks like a normal civilian. You have to use, his, uh, use your phone to track him down and find him, and he'll be running around hiding in bins and stuff, and it, it's kind of interesting. Um, it, it does force it upon you. It uses the kind of Dark Souls in, invasion technique where the guy will just be in your game and you have to go out your way to do it. And uh, there, wasn't, there wasn't a huge amount of them, not enough that I was getting uh, really frustrated. But um, what do you think of it? The first sort of two times I think I enjoyed it, uh, just sort of I would just walk really slowly in a very normal looking NPC way. Um, but then I don't know, every other time, like I did it maybe two, I had it maybe happen two more times after that, three maybe. And it was just sort of a drag because this person would be like hiding in a bush or something and I was just running around in circles trying to find them. And I feel like it would be more interesting if they took more from the Assassin's Creed stuff. Where, I mean, the Assassin's Creed multiplayer is almost exactly what this hacking stuff is. And yeah. I feel like if they took sit, being able to sit down on a park bench or something, like a little more interactive, uh, being able to interact and hide within the environment or within crowds, I feel like that would have made it a little more interesting. But instead it was sort of just like, I'll walk really slowly around in circles or hide in a car while this guy tries to find me and so I I, I don't know it, it's a neat concept I think but it just doesn't really it never sort of like a lot of other things it was never amazing and I never really yeah, felt compelled is, to do um, it again it's pretty easy to hide I did the hiding thing once and I I think I found a big old bus stop or a big I can't remember what it was and I would just like depending on which direction the guy was who was trying to find me because it actually shows you where the guy is who's trying to find you which I think is a little bit unfair but if he was coming from the left, I would just shimmy around this box on the right-hand side, and I would literally just spin around this box in circles so that he could never see me, depending on what anger he was at. And obviously, I, I won, and it, I, it was fun. It was satisfying to watch him run around like a headless chicken, but it's kind of unfair for the Seeker if you have any mental capabilities to actually hide yourself. <laughs> like, I think I found one person, and he was just running around pretty cluelessly, not knowing what he was doing. But if you actually know how to hide, it's really difficult to find people. But as you said, it is an interesting concept. I think with a few more tweaks, it could, it could be pretty fun. Okay, to summarise, uh, you know, we've complained a lot about Watch Dogs, but that, that's just going to happen when you hype up a game to this extent and then you show it off uh, to look like a much better game than it really is, to be honest with you. It, it's I, I enjoyed it. I had a good time, but... I just feel it could have been so much more, and they really didn't deliver on a lot of aspects, which they said they were going to deliver on. So, uh, I am going to give it a three stars, uh, and I'm just going to keep my hopes up for Watch Dogs 2, because I still think it's a cool concept. 
I just don't think Ubisoft really delivered, to be honest with you. It's not a terrible game, but uh, I just think the hype train kind of pushed it a bit, of course. Uh, see, now, I don't think the hype did anything to it, because like I said, for me, I, I didn't have any for it going into it. I was just, I didn't know what to expect. Mm. And I think, for me, even if that trailer didn't exist and I and there was never at any point any hype for it, I still wouldn't have liked it because I don't think it's very interesting um, I was pretty much bored out of my mind for like 80 or 90 percent of the time playing it and now that we are finishing this review I probably won't ever play it again and just because it it, it just didn't really do anything interesting for me and there was a part of me that was just like I think I might give it two stars but I, for me, two stars would imply that like it's poorly made, and it's not a good game. But it, it it's it's a well made game. Like it runs well. It there were very few glitches. It's well presented, and it's a totally well made game. But it's just I just was so bored playing it. Um, so I'm going to go three stars, just what you did as well. I was so bored playing it, and I I don't really I'm not really sure. W the people that are saying they're really enjoying it, I don't, I don't know what they're enjoying. But that's just me. I mean, <laughs> like oh, I, destroyed. It, it doesn't. I feel like also if this had come out a year ago, before Saints Row Four and GTA Five, it probably would have helped. Yeah, um, definitely, definitely. Because Saints Row Four and GTA Five are like the absolute pinnacles. Like, like they are at the peak, highest point of open world crime games, and they're doing things completely differently, but they're doing them so well. And I just this just feels like a sort of GTA knockoff with a hacking gimmick. And yeah. I, yeah. I think ultimately all those games had substantial novelties, uh, and then Watch Dogs came along with the hacking system, and it just really isn't enough to make it feel new and exciting compared to the yeah. pretty good uh, open world franchises that we have on offer today. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, Saints Row didn't start out very good. It took them like three, two, or I think it took them till Saints Row the Third to get it right. Yeah. And I mean GTA 5, GTA 5 was the first GTA game that really hooked me. So I mean it it takes a while and that's understandable, but it was just and I mean like yeah, the next Watch Dogs game or maybe Watch Dogs 4 will be like, <laughs> fucking amazing. <laughs> but I don't know. It's just I don't know if I'm going to play I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know about Watch Dogs 2. I don't know if they can I mean they've already said they've started making it. It's so. probably out next year knowing Ubisoft. Probably, and then there'll be one every year. Yeah. It'll be like Assassin's Creed, Watch Dogs, and Far Cry for every year until we're dead. So. <laughs> yeah. Wow, look forward to those. Yep. Right, I think that about sums it up. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.